It is another edition of the On The Mic podcast here with myself, Mike Pendleton. And it's actually been way too long since uh, I last spoke to uh, my guest today. Back in 2019, exploded and stole the spotlight in Bellator uh, when she defeated Heather Hardy. We spoke to her right after. And now she's got another one. She is the one and only Taylor Turner. Taylor, it's been way too long. How are you? Thank you, sir. And it has been. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, so you'll take on Valley Loreda this Friday at Bellator 271. You're coming off a victory in your last fight, a very quick victory at that. It's kind of your thing. Uh, when you get in your hand raised, you like to get it done quickly. Just first and foremost, like, well, how did this fight come together for you? Well, honestly, so I had just gotten done. I am so sorry. The housekeeping is here. I have to tell them. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this kind of came together. I... Sorry. So yeah, this fight kind of came together. I had just gotten off my win and went straight from there to training with one of my teammates, Shannon Young out at the UFC. So we flew out there for a little while, came back and, you know, I never really leave the gym. Sometimes I've, I've learned to take short breaks and focus on family when I need to. And then, you know, kind of give it a week or two to get back to the gym. I think it just makes life healthier overall. And then, um, anyhow, I was talking with the, the matchmaker just about some of our other people that we have and different things coming up. And I, you know, they're like, Oh, do you have a, you know, 125 females? Like, I'm the only one right now who's, um, you know, eligible for it. Who's who can make weight and do all that. Just, they were like, okay, let's do it. So you just, you know, you throw your name out there sometimes and you, you call out the world and thankfully fate gave me this opportunity. So here we go. Yeah. I think that's one thing I truly admired in the first conversation I had with you is that you're, you're so dedicated to your craft and the gym and it's something where, you know, some fighters, they're 60% in, but they say they're 150% in. What is it being a wife, being a mom, being everything that you are, that you're like, wait, wait, fighting is also one of the most important things in my life. And how, how do you prioritize both those things? There have been times I've done it wrong. I mean, I think my, my fight against Alejandro was one of those um, results of that when I thought I could do way more than I should. So it's a learning process all the time. Getting comfortable thinking you know this game, thinking you can do all that is never a good idea. Yet again, I've learned that. Um, but yeah, and I guess, you know, one thing maybe to not be too esoteric on all this, but MMA for me in the sport, it just represents not just the fighting. I get to be physical. I get to show my craft. I get to, you know, actually challenge if what I'm doing is working, but on top of it, there is that like mental aspect that I think is so beneficial for people that you learn that you're tougher than you think you are, but at the same time, it humbles you. So my family is involved in it all because of all those lessons and all the reasons I love the sport for more than just the idea of making it famous as an MMA fighter. Um, so it's easy. I, I don't know of a better word, uh, but to be involved in the gym, you know, obviously everything gets kind of old, but our whole lives are around it and I believe in it. So it makes that part easy. Yeah, no, and that's great. And I love that, you know, you keep the family involved as part of it as well. Uh, with, with all that said, how good does it feel to be back with Bellator? Obviously you've been there before you've done it before, um, you, you know, talking to the matchmaker and then you get offered a fight. What's it like to be back with Bellator? You know, it really is an honor and humbling. I love the people here. Every time you see them, when I've come with other my teammates in their corners, or even when I fought, they just, they remember you and, and everybody's very professional. So that's really nice. And there's just something about, for me personally, it's like a redemption story for this one. You know, like I, I was at the top of the, the mountain. I, I, I was at the top of my game and I honestly fell probably to the bottom very quickly right after that with kind of getting too ahead of myself and um, not focusing on the stuff that got me there. And, you know, you have one bad fight in this and it, I didn't even really show up in my last Bellator fight. So it, it was, I just was disappointed in it. Um, so the fact that Bellator is giving me another shot, you know, just at least, and I know I'm the underdog and probably being brought into loss, blah, 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 or lose, but I just, I want to go out and I, all the stuff that I've worked on that I never got to, to try to see, I'm just excited that I get to do it on this stage. So it's my redemption story, so to speak. Well, I, I will ask about Valley the Rated, but I want to talk more about what you just mentioned there. And that is that you were there. And you, like I mentioned earlier, you did beat Heather Hardy and you were all over the place. Um, with that being said, you talk about a redemption story. So what is the ultimate goal here for you? You know, for me, I want to pave the way for the people coming after me. I want to be, I'm not for everybody and I get that. Um, I want to be uh, an example for people to say, like, look, 
if you love it, keep going, put one front of the front of the other. And there's going to be dark days, dark years even, but if it's what you want, then just keep going for that goal. And you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised at where it takes you. Cause in my career, the times when I really took a step back and thought, you know what, I got to get back to doing it because I enjoy it. Like forget how many Instagram followers forget, you know, being famous, forget, you know, what the world is saying about you, even though that's kind of fun, you know, I mean, who has your ego? Like, let's be honest. But every time I've, I've gotten off the track of why I started and why I do it, um, I, I do really badly. Um, and I'm stubborn. So it took me a little while to learn that lesson at times and even had to relearn it again. So for this part, it is, is that I just want to go out and have fun and do what I love and show people coming up behind me, just keep going. If it's what you want, if it's not okay, that's fine too, but there's, it's possible. Now, having been there before and been at the top and, and realizing all these things that you're, you're saying that you've realized throughout the years, what, what is your mindset now coming into this fight against Valerie, who is also looking for her own redemption after following, you know, her first loss? Yeah. So I'd say, um, like, Wait, repeat the question one more time. No, just like, what is your, like, so mind, it's, you're fine. You're totally fine. Just your mindset coming into it, you know, <laughs> it's also going to be her. And she's looking for redemption as, as well as, you know, you are uh, back yeah. inside about the story. Yeah, you know, so remembering that, like, I do know that about her. And I, um, uh, so I know she's going to come out probably 10 times as strong as she has. And she's worked on stuff and she really is going to want to show something. To that extent, though, I've also learned thinking too much about what the other person's thinking takes you away from like the inside of you and what you're doing. So I can't worry about her. I can't worry about what she's thinking. Yes. We watch film. Yes. You know, there's that smart part of game planning, but I'm, I'm more focused on me at this point in time and doing my thing. So. Yeah. That's and that's per like, that's literally perfect. I think that's what led you to get that win over, you know, Heather Hardy and all of your other wins because it's, you're focusing on yourself. And you kind of mentioned, you know, sometimes you had to go back and realize some things that when the fights didn't go your way, why that may have happened. Uh, the last time I spoke to you was before the pandemic, which seems like 10 years ago. Uh, yeah. it, pandemic seems like it's taken a lot of years off a lot of people. Um, what were you able to do during the pandemic, not just as, you know, a fighter, but as a woman, as a mother, as a family person that, that has helped you get back, not only in the win column, but get back to this mentality of, I'm looking for redemption. I'm back where I should be. And I'm ready to shock the world again. You know, it kind of all goes hand in hand a lot of the times with that. I mean, life is going to throw you all kinds of stuff in your way. And it's just about what your perseverance is and how creative you can be to get over it. So we have an MMA gym and that was hard because when they shut everything down, you know, people are understanding for a month and we have wonderful people at our gym. Um, and there's a lot that even had said who got a chance to keep their jobs, like just keep billing us, keep doing this. But our livelihood and, and we hire people and we're keeping other people alive and we're doing that. So that was, it definitely sidetracked things for a little while, but after just a month or two, we were very, not to get political, but we're very libertarian and we're like, all right, people want to come, come and we're going to do what we have to. And you can't, you know, with, with some of like my uh, one teammate Ovens, um, and some of them like, you can't shut stuff down and expect them to be at their best. So we had to still train and keep going. So once again, it really, honed in on the fact that sometimes you just have to focus on where you're going and take it one step at a time and not worry about next week or next month or if you're going to get in trouble or what it may be so um in all of that it just allowed me to strengthen up that resolve of of people are going to say lots of things everybody's gonna have different opinions but you gotta have a strong backbone and do what you know is right as someone who's dedicated her life to this sport and you know you just talked about the business ramifications of, of the pandemic but did you, whether it was in yourself or your team or just those that you know that are in the fight game, did you notice a sense of change um, or, or maybe people getting stronger, M not, not even just physically, but mentally and emotionally because of the pandemic and because they were still showing up to the gym and, and they weren't going to be held back? Yeah, you know, there is. And there was a there was definitely transition periods at first, especially when it was new. Um people were a little bit more nervous and scared. We didn't know what was going, but as we started to kind of get a little grasp on things a little bit more, um, I think it did change people's mentalities in that sense of like, okay, I'm scared of something, but I still have to live my life and I still have to go over. So that was good to see. And, you know, I think a lot of people get drawn to MMA because of the sense of accomplishment and family and things. So there's a lot of people in our gym who suffered worse mentally, not being there. And they had to like face themselves in a different way. 
Um, so when they were able to come back, it had like a whole new grasp of, of like, yes, like let's work hard, even if they're not the fighters, you know, of, of you never know when your last day is or what's going to come up. So you just, you've got to do what you got to do for you and, and love what you do. And so I did see a good switch in most people of buckling down and saying, no, this is what I love and refocus it. Yeah. And I think it's been great. And now we'll, we'll go a little bit more into your opponent. I know you said you can't focus on her. You got to focus on yourself, <laughs> but Bellator 271 this Friday, uh, the YouTube prelims, which is where you will face Valerie Larea. Um, also the main card on Showtime. I'm just going to take a sidestep here really quick, Taylor, and just give the most props ever to Bellator, because I think for the first time since the pandemic happened, uh, or started, you know, way back when in January of 2020, at least that's when I started it as it began. Um, their crowd last week in Ireland for Bellator 270 was the most electric crowd I've seen in years and really brought a sense of like, we're getting back to normal. And yes, we've had fans in, in the arenas and all of that. And, you know, Chris Cyborg returns on the main card this weekend. So many people like business is booming for Bellator. And it just seems like, I've been saying that for almost a year now. When you see all the things that they've done, moving back to Showtime and, and bringing in, you know, old names and, and old faces or and just really focusing on, hey, fighter safety, you know, through the pandemic, but fan entertainment through and through and the fights that they're putting on, all that they're doing. What is it like to be back with Bellator as they're doing all these great things? You know, that is phenomenal. I give them all the credit in the world because when you're at, at – that level that they are i mean you're up against all kinds of yeses and nos and regulations and all this stuff but the fact that they are still you know keeping their people hired people keeping their people going fighters we can't i mean i know i've taken off for some you know times here and there but the newer people coming up like you don't want to take off for super long you know i mean that's not good for their career and this is their life and a lot of them want to be the champions and make the millions and this is their you know that kind of thing so the fact that bellator kept going and tried to give them the best stage they can. Um, and now that it's, they're just fighting through it. Like I, it, and they're fighters just like we are, like you're not going down you know, without swinging. So um, the fact that they are succeeding and bringing life back into it. And I think that gives hope to the populations of people around that, you know, go out and get again, live your life and let's go watch some fights and let's go be in crowds. And it's not the end of the world with the exception of you do have to be a little bit cautious and there's new regulations and that's fine. So no, great Bellator. They're doing phenomenal. You, you mentioned Instagram followers and social media, this and social media, that your opponent, Valerie's very good in that aspect. Um, I think unfairly to her, a lot of people just crowned her a social media star who tries to fight. And then once she suffered this first loss, there was a lot of, you know, things throwing her way, which I thought was unfair to her. You know, she is a Taekwondo black belt. She's done, she's dedicated her life to the sport just as you had, but being, in the spotlight and beating someone who no one expected you to beat in the past, like Heather Hardy, a world champion boxer. What does that fight in all of your fights, not just the Heather Hardy fight, but does that fight particularly help you with going up against someone who has all this attention is also looking for her redemption. Are you able to look back and pull some things from that fight against Heather Hardy into this fight against Valerie? Yeah, I'm a firm believer in Providence and that everything has led me to this moment. You know, there's lots of times you sit there and in all of our lives in different areas, and I'll talk specifically about my fight career, but you ask like, God, why? Like I worked, I did all the things, at least I thought it was. And for whatever reason, like I froze or, you know, I've talked about that in my, my past, um, when I was going through a long losing streak there. And it just like really makes you like, God, why, why? So I look back at all of them and every one of them has taught me a lesson to get to this spot. Um, and especially there's a lot of similarities. Now, I don't like living in the past too much because I've done that before. And yet again, it brings me down a bad road where you settle and get comfortable. Um, but there is some comfort in knowing in my experiences, I'm of a lot more experience than my opponent does right now. And I think that, you know, some ways can work against you, but can be very positive for me. And the Heather Hardy fight is definitely one of those that is, I know what it's like to be kind of on the lower end and not expect ex you know, high expectations from it, but no, I'm a good fighter. Um, and come into it against somebody who's probably got a lot more pressure in a lot of ways on them, you know, and she's young and, um, and I, and I hate that, you know, that people switch fans so much, like she is a good fighter and she is, she had a loss, like that's part of the career. Doesn't mean, you know, anything bad about her, like, so 
I don't know. Um, yes, I can draw on my past fights for all of this. And I, you know, I feel for my opponent, even I can't help it. People always say I'm too nice to fight. Maybe I am a little bit, but, um, I think it's awesome that she's, you know, on the big stage and she's able to be able to overcome that stuff so well. That, what is the long- lost out. Oh God. No. What is the long-term goal for you here? Cause I know, you know, we talk about redemption you talk about paving the way for people who will come after you, but, uh, is, is, you know, obviously going in there and getting a victory is the most important thing here for you on Friday. But do you want to stick around with Bellator? Like, what, where do you see your immediate future after this fight? So I honestly have gotten distracted at times by like, oh, maybe I should go for here. I want to do it for as long as I want to do it. I know that's not the sexy answer or the answer that everybody wants and not even the answer that people even want to invest in a lot of times. I know the big promotions like this want somebody who's – I'm sorry, I'm sitting on my feet and so it hurts. Somebody who's going to be sitting or, or, you know, they can invest their money in and it's going to turn around and give them a lot of money. And, um, you know, I want to keep fighting for Bellator. I want to see, to go against great competition and, and keep testing myself. But I don't know what it's looked like because it's really never been my goal to be the champion. It's just been, I like doing it. So I'm going to go do it. Um, I liken it to, for, I, I love to run and I do races and everything. And for a long time, I had to stop doing even just like the small races that I would sign up for that are just for fun. Cause I got too competitive and too caught up in like, Oh, my time and what everybody thought and what everybody this and where's that. Um, and I just took the fun out of it. And same thing with MMA. When I let it, the fun get lost in it, it's not there. So my long-term goal, I want to pave the way for the people behind me. I want to show people that it doesn't matter where your ups and downs go. There's that. And I just want to be able to say, stay in shape and say yes to Bellator if they call again, or, you know, even a smaller card, like one of ours, like I just, want to be able to to keep going for as long as I can I want to be 50 and still fighting in this and have people be like you're too old you should get out that I win and people be like oh no no maybe not <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing and I'm and listen as long as you want to do it who's going to tell you no right like that's, that's the most important thing that, it, that is the utmost important thing people have asked like how do you know like before like when you were going through your losing streaks or for every, somebody else who's losing like when do you know when to tell them to get out and I'm like as long as you wake up in the morning, you ask yourself in the mirror, do I want to do this? If the answer is yes. Well, that's simple. Then just go out and do the things that tell, like get you to the yes. Like if you just want to do it for you, do it. One day for all of us, the answer will be no. And then in a, in a blessed world, you get to step out on your own, not because of an injury, not because you got kicked out, not because of anything like that. So that's kind of my goal. I just want to live my life and do it and say yes when I can say yes, say no if I want to say no. And when you talk about paving the way, what is the most important thing for you about paving the way? Obviously, younger fighters are going to look and they're going to want to win. Some are going to want to be the champion. Some are going to want the Instagram followers. Some are going to want all the podcasts and all the interviews and all of that and the nice cars and all the big paychecks. But some are just going to want to do it and learn from you because they love to do it. And some might even lean on you more because fighting is all they have. So when you say pave the way, what specifically are you looking to do? not just for your teammates, but maybe for those who are just watching you on Friday at Bellator 271. Um, well, I will say specifically call out one uh, teammate in particular, Dre Miley. He is an amazing fighter. He lost an eye saving somebody's life. I'll, hopefully you can interview him one day and he'll give you his story. It's his story to tell. Um, but because of that, he's had a really rough time getting fights because uh, a lot of athletic commissions won't let him fight with just one eye, that kind of thing, which is, is we've had to, to go lots of different routes and he's an exciting fighter. He's young. He wants to go all the way to the top. He wants it. So I'm hoping that I can make a big enough impression on Bellator, UFC, whoever, that they look at our gym even more and they look at people like that and want to give them another shot. Um, Because let's be honest, the MMA world too is wonderful, but there is a, a bro kind of community at times, you know, you got the top gyms because they're good and they're top, but they also, then because they have the bigger name, get their people into these, these things faster. So if I can play my role in getting us on the map a little bit more and people looking at, at my teammates, that's what I want to do. And then for people who aren't part of my gym, um, who've written me and um, just, you know, been happy for me and, and also said for me, my losses and they're, they're coming up and gone through similar paths. Just that, like, as I said, if it's what you want to do, then just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And I don't know where the journey's going to take you. I can't promise you you're going to be the champ. Um, but I can promise you it'll take you to places you didn't even imagine into a life that, that you can't even fathom because if it's a calling inside you, it's calling you towards something. What we, we have an idea of what we think it is, but it's not always that way. And you'll end up in better places than you ever thought you would be. You mentioned earlier, one of your teammates, obviously Ovin St. Preux, he has a fight this weekend. You have a fight this weekend. 
what is it like in the gym when every when you guys are, all have something coming up? You're all working towards something. You're all building towards something. Now, whether it's ovens or not, but just how what is it like when the gym is clicking on all cylinders and everyone has something that they're they have a, a fight coming up? So, well, first of all, I do have to say Vince is not fighting this weekend anymore. Um, he did recently have a baby, and they just kind of had a pause. So, oh, injury. Sorry, he got um got a, a injury for it all, and so we had to pull out for that reason. Hopefully, we can get him you know, regrouped and going forward. But um, as far as like our team goes, that is one thing I just say, we have a lot of high level fighters and you know, we got Emily King and Jason King and Ovens, and Shanna Young, and just a whole bunch of people. I feel bad if I leave anybody out, but our gym is able to like, now that I have my fight, everybody took over teaching classes more. We we're cleaning out our warehouse because we're building a new gym, you know, and kind of revamping stuff. They, um, they, they all, take up their role so I can train more. So we really have like a, just a beautiful symphony at times of how people don't mind being at the top and they call them our show ponies. Like right now I get to be the show pony, as we say. And then they also go to the back as, and with no problem, help the, lift the other people up. So we have a really good gym culture as far as that goes. Last one here for you, Taylor. And I really appreciate all your time today. What should we expect on Friday? Um, I am expecting to have her come out and be a power swinger and me stand my ground and give it right back. So that's, and I, hopefully it'll be an exciting, I, you know, from watching her fights and stuff like that too. I mean, she doesn't give up easy. She's got grit and, and she comes forward. So I'm looking forward to giving it right back to her. Well, you've been there before you've done it before. And uh, like I said, all your wins, they come in exciting fashion. And I'm very excited to see you back in inside the cage, regardless, but back inside the, the Bellator stage as well. Taylor Turner taking on Valley Laredo this weekend, uh, this Friday, November 12th on the YouTube prelims. Taylor, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you again. You too.